Right. Sorry about that. One person at a time. Yeah. Like, like if you're looking into a mirror and you, you reflect your goodness onto somebody else and they see it in you and you decide this is going to, from here on in, I'm going to exude goodness to like somebody contagion. else. Detach it from you, like, yeah. like a contagion, like, like a good like contagion. A, like a true, <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Yeah, yeah, a good pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> That's I a good one. If people really truly believe that they were good, whether uh, they'd be less self-destructive. Like, I feel like self-care and loving yourself is the first step to be able to love others as yourself. So if people really believe they were good, be less, less judgmental of themselves, less down on themselves, have more self-confidence and all that kind of thing. I think it's a really important point. I um, A lot of pastoral care is dealing, helping people struggle with that very thought that they're just not good enough. Mm -hmm. I can't do that because I don't have the skill, I'm not good enough, or I don't deserve your forgiveness or your love or your friendship. I'm not good enough. And whether we verbalize it or not, it permeates every aspect of our lives. And people kind of pick up on it. They may not really realize what they're, what, what they're feeling about you, but if, there's a, if you are self, deflating or self you judge yourself negatively regularly people will feel that around you and as you said if you look in a mirror and you're exuding goodness it will shine back and in fact infect everybody in a good way but if you are stuck in a place of i'm not good enough it reflects back on you and unfortunately unfortunately yeah that's why I have real problems with that broken theology. Mm. I know we turn away from God and we do bad things. Broken is not the word then. Sorry? Broken is not the word. No. Maybe there's a, another way of, of, of explaining it. Yeah. Not brokenness. No. Well, and that's the thing that most people already feel about themselves. And so it's important to remind them that that's not the whole truth perfect yeah that's exactly yeah. what he's saying yeah yeah i think yeah. so having self-confidence mm -hmm. yes it, it you see it in someone's self-confidence or in their willing to take a risk or reach out to somebody or not be judgmental of themselves yeah like just yes the tools Bye, Oh, she's she's the epitome of of self confidence. She's she knows. Yeah, and what she doesn't. Talking? You're talking about you. She's saying you are an example of someone who hopefully resides in a sense of belief that you're fundamentally good, and and that comes out in the way you lead, particularly at the food bank. Well, thank you. I was going to give an example because we had a client a couple of weeks ago. And she was really down and out and very sad that she had to come to the food cupboard. And Hillary and all of us were speaking with her and said, you know, we, that's what we're here for. And if, we, if ever you need us, just keep coming. She goes, oh, I'm never coming back. Two weeks later, she appeared and she says, I want to thank you guys for being so kind to me because, you know, she felt welcome. And so she did need us and she did show up again. So I think what we are doing... It's it's good, and we we all do. It's not just me. Everybody. No, no, suffering. it's your team. It's your team. Yeah. The team but you team. you are a leader, and that's yeah. the tone you set. Yeah. And, and most of the time, you are the first person that that they see. Yes. And you see a smile. I was talking with 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 Alan the other day, and I was asking. I said, "Do you know how how 
um, you recognize somebody smiling at you when yes. you're wearing a mask. Mm. You say, yeah, I could. And you look at the person's eyes and you can see that they're smiling. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> so goodness is coming out of people's eyes during yes. this pandemic. Yeah, you know. it's like a pheromone, isn't it? It's like some kind yeah. of <laughs> gaseous hormone that we exude. <laughs> Deliberate, like well, yes, sometimes on the street, I still randomly smile at people even though they can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And I do think you're right. That word deliberate, I think, is important. There are times when you don't have to think about it. You can just live, and hopefully, it comes out. But I think there are moments where you have to deliberately be good yeah. and try and yes. reach out um and that takes more effort it also takes self-awareness and a willingness to kind of go okay what's going on here how am i responding can i do this better or gooder it's a terrible word but you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. he, he says um goodness makes all the difference we're fun if we were fundamentally bad we would have to fight these instincts constantly now does anybody here constantly fight the instinct to be bad or just do it he said if we're fundamentally good we need only to rediscover this true nature this goodness in ourselves goodness changes the way we see the world which we've touched on a little bit here others and ourselves how we see ourselves affects how we see others and how we treat them. And you've mentioned that. I know this may be a little early in, in this moment, but how do you see yourself? Does anybody want to comment? It's a tough one. I know you don't have to. <laughs> you don't want to blow your own horn. <laughs> That's yeah, especially when Christ says, don't stand on the street corner, make sure everybody knows you're praying and you're fasting and blah, blah, blah. Go quietly in a closet and do it. But at the same time, I would say that, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I, I think I like when people make me feel good about myself by respecting you, um, even saying good morning, you know, and recognizing that there's somebody else there. So, and I think that's. When I see other people, that's what I like to do. Make them feel good about themselves, even though they may be down and out. You can say hi, you know, how are you doing, whatever. And some people might answer like, what do you care, you know, or whatever. But it's, I think it's good to actually acknowledge that they, they're there and they're present and that they mean something to the world rather than just ignoring them. You know, uh, thank you. The perfect segue into something he's written. He asks, what is the quality of life on this earth? And he says, it is the sum total of our daily interactions. Each kindness enhances the quality of life and the way people feel about each other. Each cruelty diminishes it. And that's just what you were saying, mm -hmm. that by being kind and nice to a person, you enhance the quality of their life, your life, and maybe the Life, you know how they say the beating of a butterfly's wings affects something huge on the other side. That little mm -hmm. act of kindness builds on more kindness. So it affects the quality of our life. So I think that was, but you're absolutely right. According mm -hmm. to him, and I tend to buy what he says. Mm -hmm. He says the consequences of cruelty, they end up showing in our health. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. When we recognize our goodness and act on it, we act differently and we feel better. So we are made, this is that, so that's one of his um, theses that, and it does, it's not just God there, but it's just goodness is something that builds on itself and it changes the quality of life for us and for everybody in, it, in the world. He also says, we are made for goodness by God, who is goodness itself. You can argue that, but I think most of us would tend to think that God's essence is goodness. And we are made for God and like God, who is the essence of goodness. So if you're made for God and like God, and God is goodness, and so are you. 
right from the beginning. He talks about the creation story, Genesis 1 to 5 and 1, 26 to 27. You've already got it. Um, Jackie, I'll keep these for you. Thank you. I'm just going to read, read that passage. It says, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So, and on the sixth day, something momentous happens. So, okay, so from this creation story, we know we were made by God, for God, like God. If you walk away with nothing else, take that, that's Genesis right at the beginning. It's the first thing God is giving us is this knowledge that we were made by God, for God, like God, and that God is goodness. But it's telling us some other things. It's also saying um, on the sixth day, there was this momentous change. I don't know if, you can, if you'll notice it, but there's something different between the first group and the second group in words. I'm wondering if you can catch it, because it's really important. Okay. All right. In the first day, God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. And he does that all the way through. Let there be earth, let there be whatever. But when it comes to humankind, what he said is, let us make humankind. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's not just God, let there be light. He's calling into this, let there be light, the entire divine court. So God is not just making light on a Sunday afternoon or making birds on a Sunday afternoon. He's called the entire divine court to himself and said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's fundamentally different. He sees it's not just good. He sees that it is very good. And if you know that about yourself and you believe it, Imagine waking up in the morning knowing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody wants to say anything. So in our creativity, we are like God. We're like God in our freedom. God leaves us also free to choose how we will apply the gifts and talents that we have. We are made not only like God, but for God. Imagine that you are made for God. God loves you. He loves you before you even started, before you were a gleam in your parents' eyes. You are, and Paul says, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So our being is where the spirit resides. We are hungry for God. We don't always know it, that we're hungry for God. And sometimes, instead of just knowing this, believing this, and acting out of this, we shut the mouth of desire for God with busyness. You get busy, and you just don't deal with it. And then over time, I don't know about you, but if I take a holiday, let's say I take my summer holiday, and if I don't make time during that holiday to do this kind of retrospective thinking and prayer, I can get caught up in just the day-to-day -day stuff mm -hmm. that fills your life and keeps you busy. 
but I can feel that you don't disconnect from God, but it, it thins, it stretches a little bit. And, and then so when I, the best thing to do is to read every morning and do that first. Go to God for strength. Mm -hmm. I, I used to um, read a poem, go to God for strength when tired and tempted, but you don't wait till you're tired and tempted. Mm -hmm. Wait first thing in the morning. You know, do you, then you can get about the business of the day. And you get grounded, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You said there's a there's a poem that you used to read? Yeah. Go to God for strength. Get tired and tempted. Show and see your every weakness knows. He needs to give you confidence and courage to conquer all your conflicts, all your foes. Uh, it goes on and on. Wow. Yeah. Do you have access to that? Um, I think I have it at home somewhere. I think I can pick it, get it on the um, on the web. Somewhere. Would you mind sharing that with us? Some of us might use it first thing in the okay. morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's lovely. So in this book, he shares how he has learned to talk with God and show us how we can learn to speak with God. And we'll offer some ways we can tune ourselves to God and listen to God's words of guidance. Now, this then he makes a little bit of a switch in the way he's talking. He talks goodness. He says, well, let's get real here. Scientific facts. Well, recently, I don't know. I did behavioral psychology and I get primate, primate behavior and animal behavior as a, an anthropologist, which was my first training. And he, and he says, and it's true, scientific fact in the last 30, 40 years, maybe Jane Goodall up because before it was very much, I'm going to say it, a white male group looking at the world and interpreting it through their lens. Mm -hmm. Then you started to get women and then you started to get women and men who started to look at the world differently. And what they see is that goodness, um, working together, cooperation is as much part of any survival strategy as anything else, i.e. killing the guy next to you so you can have his food. Sometimes you share. Sometimes you bring something that he wants and he brings something that you want and other things grow from that. And he says, we are designed to depend on each other and Franz Duval, which is one scientist calls it obligatory gregariousness in that we have no option but to depend on each other. So it, they used to call it fight or flight. Now there's another term and it's called tend and befriend, two strategies for survival. By caring for the young and banding together, we're tending and we're befriending. And there's as much or more of that. I mean, and most animal populations don't live in a constant state of war as we would describe it. They live in a constant state of tend and befriend with the odd violent moment or you know interaction that's negative so again he says this is goodness and you may have heard me use this term i've used it a number of times in my sermons but ubuntu mm -hmm. it's the hosa word that describes the tend and befriend survival behavior it recognizes that human beings need each other for survival and well-being more so it says a person is a person only through other persons we must care for each other to survive. As human beings, we may tear the fabric of our being. We can act cruelly, but because we are human beings, we cannot destroy the very vestige of godliness by which we were made. We cannot alter our essence. And you go right back to that essence, which is the goodness, which is goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's chapter one. That's how he grounds us and places us. I'm going to end this discussion, my part of it, with his prayer. Each chapter ends with a prayer that he's written. And so I will end with this prayer. And then I'm going to turn it over to Janet. Let's pray. My child, I made you for myself. I made you like myself. I delight in you. 
My heart aches with pity when you smother joy under the onslaught of busyness. Then there is barely a minute to pause and listen for me. You run everywhere looking for life, searching for the life of life. All the while I'm here. I am as close as a prayer. I am breathing in your breath. You look for me in the pleasure of life. Things pile upon things. Experiences crowd out experiences. Places run together in a hazy blur and still you don't find that one thing that will satisfy you. But I am here. I am as close as a prayer. I am breathing in your breath. I made you myself. I wanted you. I made you like myself. I made you good and I made you free. Listen, for I have carved in your heart to hear. Listen and know that I am near. I am as close as a prayer. I am breathing in your breath. Before you speak the word of worry or worship, I hear you. Before you sing your delight or moan your anguish, I speak. I am here. I am as close as a prayer. I am breathing in your breath. With each breath, I choose life for you. I paint the powder of joy in your heart and leave it there for you to find. I build the frame of your flourishing in the center of your being and call you to search it out. I kindle the spark of goodness in you. With each breath, I fan the flame. I am here. I am as close as a prayer. I am breathing in your breath. With each breath you choose, my child, for you are free. Will you breathe with me the breath of life? Will you claim the joy I have prepared for you? Will you seek me out and find me here? Will you whisper the prayer? Will you breathe in my breath? Amen. Now we move on to chapter two. Yes. Chapter two is stop being good. <laughs> <laughs> stop being good. Uh, so in other words, we are good. And now we're going to find out what it is to stop being good. Why we are fighting in, in chapter two is it, He's telling us that I gave it to you. It's there, it's, it's solid. You know, you don't have to do anything to get it. It's part of your psyche, part of your makeup. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. As a, at the end of the chapter, he told us that we don't have to, to do any exceptional thing to earn God's love or divine favor. Um, that unconditional love on the birth of his son, he, he gives a story about his son is born at a hospital and the conditions in South Africa at the time, um, he couldn't be there to travel to him, to, but he cares about the son, and he's in love with the son already. You know, it's it's like um, the the kid is 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 it's mine. It, 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 God gave me this this goodness, you know. Mm -hmm. to, to, and and um, he speaks of the condition of the health system, the telephone telephone communication and availability of transport. And um, he's hampered him from attending the birth of his son, but it didn't stop him from loving his son. You know? And um, sort of sight unseen. Mm. He hasn't seen him, doesn't know what he looks like, doesn't know if he has 10 fingers and 10 toes, but he's in love with his son. And, and God is present for each and every one of us. He welcomes us with love and delight. God knew us and loved us, and we are precious in his sight. 
God does not love us because we are lovable. In fact, we are lovable because God loves us. That love is it's a gift. We don't have to work for it. This is what he says in his second chapter. Um, we all we already have love and acceptance. We feel there's a hidden agenda. In most of us, we feel that there's a hidden agenda that um, can't, no, 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 can't be doing this out of love for me. It's some, some other ul ulterior motive, you know, mm -hmm. whereas in Peter, in fact, we are good. Yeah, yes. You know? mm -hmm. It makes me think of, um, okay, I'm muddled now, I'm gonna forget, but in the first <laughs> chapter, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I just went in one ear and out the other, but there was a moment there. If it comes back, I'll share okay. it. Uh -huh. well, don't feel that you have to strive and strain, you know, like, uh, like a, a child. Uh, if, 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 if I don't, if I don't um, do such and such, my mother would not love me. You know, that kind of thing. You don't have to do that kind of stuff to get to be in the good books. Where mm -hmm. okay. to be in God's good books. No, yes. You don't have to. His grace is, is there for us. We don't have to overextend ourselves, bend over backwards. Mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for, for it sounds like you don't have to be perfect. You know, that sense of we're not good enough. That we all, most of us carry around. So you, you're saying that we don't have to keep striving to be good enough. No. Okay. And, and then he called that in a sense a, a, a demon in us. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he did. And he says, he says it's the demon in us that it tells that, that perfection is the price to pay for love. For love. So we strive endlessly to be good instead of realizing we are good yeah you know imagine the feeling of not having to constantly prove you're good yeah. but to That's actually amazing. believe you're good but isn't that like saying you should accept me for what i am rather than hating me because i am you know different or yeah. think different I think no. it depends on what you, I mean, accept me for my goodness, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes mm -hmm. people bury their goodness under other things, mm -hmm. not being nice. Yeah. And I don't think anybody has to accept you as not being nice. Maybe they can help you realize that you really are nice and you need yes, all of that. Right. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that can be a challenge, yeah. Instead of dedication and discipline making, or work, it becomes an onerous burden. A, a career that once filled us becomes a series of meaningless responsibilities, requirements, and chores. You, 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 you change from, from this person who, who enjoyed it, a job or whatever it is. So you don't want to go there anymore. <laughs> Um, you you second guess yourself about the things that you're doing, whether it's good or, or you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that you you're not measuring up to 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 what the the, the task is required requiring of you. you. You're not able to do it anymore. Don't, don't go through those, you know, fights with your own self, with your own psyche, with your own. So when he, he says stop being good, does he mean stop working at it and start believing it yeah. so that you live it? Yeah. Okay. And simply love from 
my goodness, I think is what he, yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, yeah. But I, I, I mean, I know I've been in situations in a job or something where at first I was absolutely thrilled to be there and I thought this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But then it wears on you and all sorts of things. They wear on you and they beat you down and yeah. and you lose that purpose of being there. You become dispirited. You know, you know, it, it's not only in, 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 in a big setting that or you go to a store or you, you sometimes it's in a family. Within the family, you have to fight to, to show your good. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes at your, as you say, as a job, you, you, you tend to meet up with, with a lot of walls that create um, doubt and, mm -hmm. and, and despair in, within you. Um, and mm -hmm. this is what we have to fight because you are good. Good. That word good is in the English language, they have a lot of words that, that are multi meaning. Mm -hmm. And good is one of those words. Excuse me. It's true. Yeah. It's, 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 my, when, I, I, when I talk to one of my brothers, um, I, he says, How are you? I said, I'm good. Say, who told you that? <laughs> 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 I, that uh, uh, I said, yeah. I know I am good, but uh, I, I haven't read this book as yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Goodness means a lot of different things, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 it's your call, you know? Mm -hmm. So goodness, now ask, ask, see if you, goodness isn't us trying to be good to win God's love. No, that's right. Okay, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> that reminds me of my favorite poem, which you might know because it's very famous, Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. I've heard it, song? but please. Let me Google it really quick because I haven't got it memorized. And I can read it to you. So it's that same idea of like not striving for goodness, just, but just being. Okay. Can I quote something that he's, he wrote? He wrote, when we cross the threshold from living our goodness to doing our goodness in order to be good, we work in the mistaken conviction that we were doing, that what we are doing will enable us to merit God's love. Mm. Yeah. Is yeah. that the poem? Yeah. So this is the poem. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscape, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the, high, the wild geese high in the clean blue sky are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of singing. Thank you. And that's Mary Wild Oliver. Geese by Mary Oliver. So I've got that poem plus the poem that you read first thing in the morning if we could collect those yeah. and share them that would be yeah. wonderful yeah it says he also said that we suffer and go now because we we undervalue ourselves that's it we are not doing enough yeah meaningless responsibilities mindless chores mm -hmm. And he speaks of the Dalai Lama. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said that and, um, in the book, he said that the Dalai Lama should be the, the angriest person 
you know, because it, he was exiled from his country mm -hmm. and living out his days um, in another country. Yeah. But he, he the Dalai Lama, exudes joy. Not happiness, but joy. Yeah. Joy is a, a different, so that's another word. That, it's the, the joy of, mm. of, mm. Of, of, of being alive, the joy of seeing a, a, a new day, yeah. the joy of, mm -hmm. of, of nature changing its seasons, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he, he speaks of, of the Dalai Lama that way. Parajan is being the essence of joy as, as opposed to happiness. We have to be perfect in order to be loved. We strive to be good, to do good, only to find that we are already good. We can easily fulfill our purpose, just rejoice in our inherent goodness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just rejoice in, in, in what hmm. we are. So we make we... love is action. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and love poured out, it seeks to no rewards. So God isn't seeking a reward from us. You know, he just poured out his love on us. Okay. And, and gave us good from the core. So if we honestly accept that we are goodness, mm -hmm. in that goodness is joy. Yes that we would be able to touch in our lives right. and probably carry with us on yeah. a daily basis. That, that is the, ah. yeah. the, the mm -hmm. keeping stones in the water, you touch all those that's lives true. that that's you meet. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And you have a choice. <laughs> choice. That's another word, isn't it? I'm writing down all these words. You identify, yeah. Joy. Good joy, choice. Yeah. Joy is opposed to happiness. Good from the core. Mm -hmm. Choose what you do, not not how you feel. You know, it it. it. You know how they say. If you want to be something, work to be it, and then you will get there. In other words, if you want to be happy, make yourself smile. And after a while, the making of the smile becomes easier. Because I don't know about you, but as soon as I put a smile on, there are emotions that come with it, yeah. mm -hmm. and I can't deny them. And you begin to feel those emotions and maybe become more comfortable with them. And then before you know it, it might take some time, but happiness and joy actually are there mm -hmm. in part because you made yourself mechanically smile. So you, uh, there was action there, but it led to a state of being, which then you can share. I guess that's what you're saying. Action and yes, love. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Action, but they're not always love. Um, they, they, you can, you can act out of, Anger, shame, jealousy, insecurity, pride, resentment, hate. Mm. But you can emulate God's to God's love to reach and express goodness that is our core, the heart of each of us. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know. mm. he, he speaks about the power of goodness. In, in, in that chapter two, the, the good shepherd dividing, the, going and looking for the lost sheep mm -hmm. to bring it back home. Oh, yeah. The prodigal son's father, he, he, he reinstates his son. He, he doesn't second guess and say, You took my money and you went away and da 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 da. da. No, the, his food, his clothes, his jewelry. You are, you are my son. Just like how he 
um, Desmond Tutu loved his son before he saw him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that the, the, which goes back to creation. Yeah. God loves mm -hmm. us yeah. before we were even created. Yeah. 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 I loved you before you were even yeah. uh, uh, in yeah. your mother's womb. I knew you in your mother's womb. Yeah. 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 It's in the Psalms, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. If I, I was a Presbyterian, I'd be able to quote the actual line in the actual song. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just an Anglican. <laughs> They could always do that at seminary. They, they were so good. And they had to memorize the Bible. The we whole did. Bible? Well, big chunks of it every wow. week and then recite yeah. it in front of their profs. Ooh, we never had to do that. We I just had an app. Sorry? I grew up as a Baptist and we had to memorize all the law scripture. Okay. Yeah. No, we just carry an app on our phone. <laughs> <laughs> a Google search. <laughs> Oh dear, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's goodness, having a good laugh. <laughs> he talks about care and sacrifice for children. Yeah. You know, and uh, stories from it would be nice to hear a sacrifice that you somebody made for you, or you, Jackie, or you, Hannah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me, I had an emotional response to that. It, it would be nice to know that someone has sacrificed something for you, for, for me or whatever. But I'll bet there are some of us who, because we really don't believe we're good enough, would, have, would find it difficult to believe that someone had sacrificed for us. Even if it's true, our own despair in ourselves yeah. doesn't allow us to acknowledge. It also allows us to continue to live in that sense of victimhood, mm -hmm. which is really tough to get out of. But if we could believe this, what you're just talking about, that God loves us, yeah. period, maybe that would help. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had anybody sacrifice something? Oh. Or something good that happened that we can't believe that it happened. Jackie, what about you? My memory is failing me now. I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of things, but right now I can't. That's off of my head. Close one think, of it. I think parents do it regularly. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll put their money into their kids instead of into themselves. Yes. But they're not talking to their kids about it, you know? So the kids yeah. grow up not even realizing these things are happening. Yeah. But he did, didn't he? He tells that story mm -hmm. that, yeah. yeah, he came home and he needed the bus fare to go back yeah. to school. His mom gave him yeah. the money. The money. Yeah. And then she went hungry for two days. Wow. She, she had to go back home with, without any, any wow. food. Mm -hmm. But he was able to, to travel by the bus and to go to his school. Mm -hmm. So that was a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Parents do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But most most parents don't talk about it. They yeah. just do it. No. It, it, yeah. I think that I think that is uh, parenting one oh one. <laughs> Silent parenting one oh one. Silent Everybody parenting. Yes, that's true. Good for you. You are my child. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then there's the other, the other side of the coin where some parents are so selfish that they yeah. can't see. That's that, true. That is their responsibility. That is one of their responsibilities. Too, yeah. You know. True. To, um, if they are under the influence of some. Uh, Drugs or something like that. They should rather go to the drug yeah. stores and then have their charity. Yeah. yeah. And then, then grandparents come and take it. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. so a lot of kids um, are raised by grandma. You have yeah. you 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 have somebody in your life. I've I've known people who talk about um, a neighbor who, who was so good to them. 
and oh, and he talks about a uh, lady, Mrs. Mahosella. Yeah. She, in in the height of the, the um, AIDS crisis, AIDS uh, was so rampant in South Africa. She would take all the children around, his parents and dad, wow. and then the, the parents started to bring their children because they knew that they were suffering from AIDS themselves and would die. So they brought their children to her. And she ended up like mm -hmm. the village orphan, orphan uh, yeah. manager. And and he's in the story too. He says, "This is happens in in, in all countries." For mm -hmm. one mother Teresa, mm -hmm. and and uh, the, the people that were poor and dying, and uh, he would she would hold them so that they could die in dignity, yeah. stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's come closer to this time. All those. Caregivers in the hospitals, all those people oh, who yes. were suffering from AIDS, mm -hmm. not AIDS, some the COVID. pandemic, COVID, COVID yeah. Yeah. you know, their families couldn't come close to them. So they were some of the, they exuded goodness, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's a really good example because some of them sacrificed so much time with their families. Yeah. They have to isolate from them That's right. completely. Uh, and it's their children's yeah. birthday. Yeah. They just think this is yeah. care for people. Yeah. I went over to, there are two uh, seniors' homes that we, I used to go to and do services. Mm -hmm. I haven't since COVID, but um, I have been dropping things off. And mm -hmm. I went over once and I was ca called before and I talked to the young man who was at the door, you know letting people in and out and um he told me he first of all he couldn't believe that we were taking the time to pray for them and stuff like that but he said i haven't been home in six weeks i haven't seen my wife and my, my children because i can't i'm here i'm not going to leave these people so i stay here and and that was it was the right across camilla one of the worst hit if you walk up here ontario to the north end of camilla they have about 70 white crosses yeah. in their garden and it's for all the folks that passed away. Yeah. But I, when he told me that he was nearly in tears, not quite, but nearly. And, um, and just what you said, mm -hmm. imagine not being able to go home. But, you know, these are the goodness and good things that we, we can do at times. Hopefully we don't need dire situations always to be like that. He, 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 um, he spoke about the, the, the Eucharist that is giving thanks for the goodness that we receive mm -hmm. and that we are Eucharist people. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get, let's see you have a question here. How can we express this love and goodness in our own very ordinary lives? Huh. How can mm -hmm. we do it? I'm glad he gives some examples. I mean, these are extraordinary examples, like Mrs. Mafasella. Yeah. But um, still, our food bank every week, remembering like today, mm -hmm. Alina's grandma is dying. And I saw half a dozen or more people go up and give her a hug and just support her. You know, those are the small acts on an everyday basis that we can do. We can do. You have to remind yourself sometimes. You have to get out of yourself sometimes, you know, and look beyond me. But um, most of us can do that. Yeah, he says, yeah. A teacher's lack of self-regard is an example of love in action. Mm. Caregivers in an orphanage. The ordinary gift of a cuddle stands as witness to goodness. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As we live our goodness, we live it into the next generation. Living our goodness is our way of testifying that we know ourselves to be perfectly loved by God. God invites us to set aside the guilt, the shame, 
and the anxious question, we are invited to a different way of life. And that, I think, is what he's trying to do. He's going to take us on that journey to try and build that different way of life where we honestly believe. Yeah. It sounds like an amazing book. I'm glad I've ordered it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So I'm going to read wow. the, Please the do. for the yeah. yes. second chapter. Don't struggle and strive so, my child. There's no race to complete, no point to prove, no obstacle course to conquer for you to win my love. I have already given it to you. I loved you before creation drew its first breath. I dreamed of you as I molded Adam from the mud. I saw you wet from the womb, and I loved you there. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Stop racing ahead at your own pace. You'll only be exhausted, flamed out, and spent before the task is accomplished. Pace yourself with me. Walk alongside me. Do you think I don't know the demands of your life? I see you striving for perfection, craving my acceptance. I see you bending yourself out of shape to conform to the image that you have of me. Do you imagine that I did not know who you were when I made you? When I knit you together in your mother's womb? Do you think I planted a fig tree and expected roses to bloom? No, child. I sowed what I wanted to reap. You are a child after my own heart. Seek out your deepest joy and you will find me there. Find that which makes you most perfectly yourself. Know that I am at the heart of it. Do what delights you. Are you will be or and you will be working with me. Walk with me, finding your life hidden in me. Ask me any questions. My answer is love. When you want to hear my voice, listen for love. How can you be like me? I will tell you, love. The tough, unbreakable, unshakable love. Are you looking for me? You will find me in love. Do you know my secrets? There's only one, love. Very nice. Thank you. That's a wonderful place to end. Yeah. So next week we will continue. It's um, we have three weeks. We only have two more, um, and we will be picking and choosing the chapters to emphasize. But we'll continue. And um, it's a wonderful book. I think it's like a guide for life in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I hope it brings all of us joy. Yeah, yeah. Sure, it will. That sounds very interesting. Okay. Well, God bless to everyone. We've had our prayer. May we walk out with that joy in our heart. Oh, wow. We will. And a good day to you. A good day to all yeah. of you. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> okay. Later then. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs>